Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about mistakes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what mistakes do you think that most web developers make? Well, uh, this could be a pretty long list because there's a lot of mistakes that most of us make uh, and so forth. Uh, but I will, I'm going to narrow in on just one thing that I see. Like, uh, practically everybody does, like almost every single software developer does. It's actually very rare that I see software developers who are truly effective at this. But uh, let me give you some context first. So the usual thing that most software developers do as a mistake, which is like if I just say the word complacency, then most of you are going to think that what all oh, Frederick means uh, that I stop learning. Yes, that that is definitely the thing that I'm trying to get at, but I think that there is a nuance to this that is important to take because usually when you think about a software developer who's become complacent, you think about the person, for example, who stopped learning new tools and then they, they get outdated because they don't know a certain technology and that is absolutely bad uh, because they sort of they get lazy and they get comfortable in their own in tools that they know and then something new comes along and it disrupts like you know their value and so forth and so forth and so the thing that usually happens is that the software developers who want to fight that who are you know of course hungry or they scared in some cases what they will try to do is that they will try to learn more tools learn what's trendy, learn what's modern, etc, etc. They go on the hunt for ways for them to continue their learning process, which is a very great thing. And so that is the thing that you absolutely should be doing. But the thing that I see almost every software developer make uh, do, which is a mistake in my opinion, is that they reduce da down their focus and learning to the tech of whatever news, what's ever cool and new. They learn new programming languages. They focus on learning some new platform or something like that, etc., etc. These are very useful things, absolutely. But they never really consider, in my opinion, uh, a bigger perspective. And the bigger perspective I'm talking about is how do you solve problems? What blocks you from doing the things that you need to do on behalf of your customers or on behalf of your boss or something like that? What is the weakness in you in order to effectively solve things? And the reason why I ask that is because there are many ways for you to solve problems. And I will argue, if you think about it a little bit like this, a software developers have software developers who have technical skills. So the way we solve a problem in, if we think about us as part of an IT company, the way we solve our problem is that we code because we usually get a technical specification from a stakeholder or something like that that we need to execute on. So how do we solve it? We code, create a solution, technical thing goes out into production. Our problem is solved. How? But but if you if you think about the people who or product managers or product owners or things like that, how do they solve a problem? Well, they don't know how to code, but they do, do know how to connect with the domain experts and so forth and create a technical specification and then they leverage their software developers to execute on the technical specification. So from their perspective, the way to solve the problem is connecting with people, creating specifications, talking to state, uh, stakeholders and you know, then talking to the developers, setting expectations, scoping, planning, etc, etc. And then when they have, they get an estimate and they put in an order, then the problem is solved. Now the software developers usually want to think in terms of, oh, we are solving this problem because we are the ones who are executing. But the problem that as the mistake they make is that they don't see that the planning is necessary because without the planning, you have no job. And your job is only there as long as the planning is taking place. And if the planning can't be done, you have no job. And if you look at it, and this is sort of putting on somebody else's shoes, if you go and talk to the product owners, they know that if there are no product, like you, it's a symbiotic relationship. They know that if they can't produce the specification because they are higher upstream, they are upstream from the developers, the developers are not going to have anything to do, and they're not going to have their like they're not going to be able to solve their problem, which means that they're also not going to have a job. So it's a, we both are necessary, and 
when you start thinking in that in those terms, you start to realize that problem solving to actually produce value is more than just knowing how to use a specific stack. It is about you understanding the steps that are necessary to take place in order for you to ship something that you make make money from. It's in a, you can almost think of it a little bit as if you wanted to. St let's say that you take uh, you were a plumber for years and years, or like a carpenter or something like that, and you decided you got really good at that stuff, right? And then you said, ah, you know what? I'm going to run my own company. Well, now the second you decide that you're going to run your own company, you lose the privilege, quote unquote to just focus on the carpentry or the plumbing or things like that, the technical aspects of, of the whole thing. Because running a business requires you to know a lot more and do a lot uh, more uh, uh, other tasks apart from that thing in order to make your business successful. Because you're not going to make any money if you don't have any customers. You're not going to get any customers unless you know some basics about marketing and connecting and networking and things like that. And you're not going to be able to scale your business if you don't learn about labor laws or things like that in order to actually add more people uh, and, and all these sorts of things. So you, you have a whole heap of different things that has to be there for you to make money from your company. The same is true for software development. It is the exact same thing, and it's the, the it's the heart and soul that most software developers don't understand. You, as a software developer, you are a producer, a craftsman in a company, in a business, and the first and foremost thing most software developers make, as a, 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 they do, that I think is a mistake, is that they only think about the one aspect, that that one thing that the technical area that's your domain that's what you should be focusing on and so forth and I tell you that's great because that's how you start but if you want to continue your growth you're gonna to have to accept that there are always three things that are critical for any any basically any venture uh, especially in software this is like for you to be effective at it number one you need the technical skills absolutely number two you need to know the domain you need to understand like how the domain of your company, how does the different systems work, how do the different uh, people work, how do the processes work, how does the company make its money. Third and lastly, you need to be able to talk to people, connect to people, understand how to get information when you don't know how something works or know how to lead people or how to set up uh, work processes, etc., etc., so that people, that you can manage people themselves. Those three things are critical in order for you to actually be, as I like to say, a problem-focused software developer. Because then it basically means that I can, as an employer or a customer or anything like that, talk to you and know that you are competent in all the arenas that are necessary in order to actually get the end goal. Because the thing that, as I said, the software developers are doing is that they are reducing their learning and their ambition towards being good at one dimension. And that means that you will only all, only ever be able to do that one thing. And that in of itself is not ne nearly enough to solve the sorts of problems that you're dealing with. So if you have an ambition to either run your own company or become like the head honcho at, the, uh, at like a firm or something like that, to be the sort of person who makes all the decisions and has all the respect and like makes the most amount of money, etc., etc. All of these three things are necessary. That doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to be a manager, but to be a true senior and to be a true master of uh, software development and IT, to be like uh, the best of the best, you're going to have to learn all of those things because all of them are necessary in order for you to make a sustainable income or like achieve the goals of software development because as i like to say sometimes the i've even said so to my software developers that i work with guys sometimes you can code away the problem but sometimes you're going to have to have a meeting and talk to people in order to understand what you need to do in order to be able to code away the problem you can't just pick one or the other and always trust that that's going to be enough it's like a you know someone who just wants to be a back-end developer if you just want to be a back-end developer you're never going to be able to ship a web application if you just want to be a front-end developer you're never going to be able to ship a web application you are trying to reduce because we have the you can basically due to circumstances your responsibility when it comes to achieving the end result to just one dimension of the entire problem that is the mistake that almost every software developer make and they m remain 
usually where they are for years and years and years and they never actually get to the higher levels because they don't fully understand that in order for them to to continue their growth up to the highest levels they need to look at more than the tools that they are using so what I want you to take away from this is that most developers make the problem that they forget their purpose, uh, their fundamental purpose. They reduce down what they should focus on and learn and get good at to just either a coding thing or like a management thing or you know get really good at the main knowledge, etc, etc. And they don't understand that it's a trifecta usually. Uh, it's down to domain knowledge, technical knowledge and uh, soft skills. All of these things, uh, things are necessary in order for you to solve all the potential pro hypothetical problems that you can get as a software developer and as a business owner or any like it depends of course how you look at it and when you reduce your responsibility down to just one little area because that's the thing that you want to focus on what you're basically your 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 fate becomes that you will only ever be a cog in a machine you can never fully like take risk run the whole machine and if you, it's fine if you don't want to do anything more, the, but uh, it's going to be borderline impossible for you to progress beyond a senior level's uh, experience. So like a, you're, you're never going to get to a higher level uh, of uh, IT if you only reduce down what you need, to, what you take responsibility for to that part because usually when you get up to the more complicated problems where you're involved in multiple uh, teams or projects etc etc your ability to adapt to the situation identify the problems and effectively solving those problems is what's going to keep keep you in like it's that's the thing that's going to matter because you're not going to have a story card for how to do a digital transformation for a company for example you're not going to get a story for how to overhaul and cost if make uh, like infrastructure more cost effective or any of these more very very complicated problems uh, nobody's going to sit down and like write out that for you and say yeah this is how you're going to do it this is the specification this is the criteria you're going to have to understand that to be effective at solving problems you have to have a, a wider understanding of things than just your coding have a great day